In this video, I created an entire scratch game and only one sprite. Let's go. Okay, so I'm thinking of making a Flappy Bird game. So let's go. I'm gonna delete Scratchy. I'm gonna paint my own little sprite. I think something like this could do. If I had an eye, well, two eyes. And give him this cute little mouth. Except I think he would have to be looking this way. So that would be more like it. I'm gonna rename him to player. I'm actually gonna turn him to a bit of a lighter. And I'm gonna give him a bit of a highlight. Good attention to detail. Duplicate. And something like this would just look a lot better than before. I think I could get away with it if I put it in the corner. Honestly, I think it works. But I'm actually going to make a bit of a shadow on him. Something like this. And then if I put it to the back and then I make it black, I put down the opacity and sure we have a bit of a shadow. It's just a little bit of a cool attention to detail. But now we have to make the pipes. So I'm going to right click duplicate, rename it pipes and straight up delete this bro. Oh, and one thing I have to do is make it a little bit of a blank just to fix a little bit of the clipping issue that occurs up here sometimes. Perfect. So now with the pipes, you know what? You're probably bored. So let's just do a time lapse. Okay, so to begin, make an entire game in just one sprite. You have to do one grief I click, repeat two times, create clone of myself, and make for the sprite only clone ID. So clone ID to zero, then change clone ID by one when it begins. Then also I'm just gonna make a block. Run with a screen refresh and just call this clone start because I'll show you why. I'm gonna keep this there for now. But here, if I do when I start as a clone, if equal one clone ID, right click duplicate, set the two, and I'm going to switch to player, right click duplicate, set to pipes. So now as we can see up here, it's going to create my clones. But I also have to hide the original and then show and then show. But as you can see, it's a bit of a glitch because it's starting up the clones. But if I do this, if I just put all of this inside of here, and then I put this here. If I go up here, it just starts it instantly because I use run without screen refresh on here. But now let's begin some of the coding. I'm going to make him go to, to zero and zero, and then I'm going to set the pipe to go to pick random. Why? Negative 75 to 75. Now I'm gonna make him go to probably like 300. So now, as we can see, he's out of sight and we don't see him because he's all the way over in this corner. I'm going to do repeat until less than. I'm gonna make him say X position and I'm also going to make him go to the left by just negative 10. And now, as we can see, he stops at negative 317. So when less than negative 316, because it has to be less, so it's going to repeat this until its X position is less than 316, which is the 317. I'm just going to change the negative 5 because that's obviously way too fast. And then I'm going to right-click duplicate, and I'm going to make it go back to where it began. So I just go here. We can see it goes like that, and it didn't come back. What the heck? Because I have to put a forever loop here. So now, I'm actually not over there. It should probably just be in here, this forever loop. So if I go like this, you know, he spawns up there, and then I'll spawn down there, and then I'll spawn down there. It's all completely randomized, which is obviously what you need for a Flappy Bird game. But just having one pipe coming down is quite boring, so we're gonna have to make another one. So I'm gonna set three. I'm going to right-click duplicate and set the clone ID to three, and then I'm just gonna wait a second for everything else to start. So now it should be something like this. Pretty neat. But I actually think if I scaled these guys up a bit, that would be better. Yeah, something like that could do. And so I'm gonna do that just one more time. And I'm gonna probably do it to point 1.5 and then three seconds. And then that means I have to put another four repeat and then clone ID four. So now if I go back into here, one, two, three, now it should be pretty okay. Maybe I'll just do one, two seconds. Will that help? No, I think I need four then. Okay. Right click duplicate. Five, five, three seconds. Yeah, something like this 100% works. They are moving quite quick. So I might just do, just for more organization, I'm going to make a variable for sprite pipe speed and set pipe speed to go negative three and then i'm going to set these two pipe speed so i can just change it without having to change you know every single one individually hide that and i'm gonna do a bit of testing and i'll let you know when i'm finished Okay, so I think I found the perfect formula. This is all if you want to check it out. So now I'm going to make the player. I'm going to make a variable for this sprite only, y speed player, and I'm going to forever change y by y speed player, and I'm going to change y speed player by negative one forever. But if key space, I'm going to set y speed player to 10, and then wait until not key space. So you can't just fly forever. So I'm going to hide that just to make life easier. I'm going to drag this out here, right click duplicate, grab all this, this, and here, grab a forever, and now that should work. There we go, perfect. I'm also going to make this guy and rotate him like this because I'm going to want the guy to point in the direction Y speed player. Negative Y speed player like this. I was just going to be facing. Pretty cool. You know, that looks kind of scuff. So I'm going to make a variable for this sprite only. Direction player. I'm going to point direction. Direction, going to change direction player. I'm going to change direction change. player. And so this is what I've come up with. Something that looks a little bit like this. Which, you know, it is a little bit scuff. It's all in one sprite. But right now I think it's looking pretty decent. But I want to test something out. I'm going to right click. Get rid of okay, this. Going that, to that, add. That, right that, now we're also going to make it. So can be, you know what? I'm just giving up on the idea for now. It's way too complicated. So for right now, I'm gonna make it so you can actually do it. So, however, if touching, do if touching color, I'm gonna have to do something like this or touching the color that. And I'm gonna stop on. Let's see if that works. Okay, perfect. But instead of stopping all my- I'm gonna make it broadcast the message. Just death. And so now when you die, I'm just gonna make it say you died. Pretty self-explanatory. And I think something like this could look alright. So let's draw my little box. Call it died. And when I receive death, I'm actually going to click 6. If equals when I do 6, then I'm going to switch to dead text and show. So I want to see if this will actually work. Okay, perfect. But I'm gonna edit this a slight bit. 
Actually, I'm going to make a variable player state. I'm going to set player state to dead. But when we start, I'm going to set player state live. I'm going to grab the if. I click duplicate player state. Get rid of all this. In here is equal to alive. Then it can go up and down. Then I'm also in here just going to set y speed player to 10. I also have to do the same. So right click duplicate and if player equals alive. Or yeah, I just put it all in here. Right, I have to put it in this repeat. Yeah, am I correct? I am correct. Perfect. So I'm just going to put that all in here. But then I have to fix the issue. Or as you can see, I just continue to float because I'm touching the color. So I think I have to put it out here when I start as a clone. Clone ID equals one. Then if touching color that, then it's going to do all that. I'm going to do repeat this until equals player state dead. So I think... There we go. Let's go. Perfect. All right, all right. This video is going to take forever to edit. So let me just summarize the last couple things. I fixed up the you died screen and added a drop shadow of the text into the pipes. I then drew this little background and then coded it so that it would repeat and come back like a scrolling background. And with all that accomplished, this is what it looks like so far. Really good. And then I thought to myself, I have to make a menu screen because every single game has that. So, so I had to create the button and then I had to make the text. After a lot of work, like creating sound effects, music, and adding a respawn screen and doing a little bit of improvement on the you died screen, I think I've completed the entire game in only one sprite. So I introduce you, Flappy Cube.